Hey, what's up, YouTube? Oh, geez. I couldn't use that shutter release, that remote shutter release, because I can't trust it. And man, I can't wait to go on Amazon and write this huge paragraph review on that little shutter release thing that can't be trusted. Tonight's episode, if you can call it an episode, brought to you by Old Speckled Hen. If it's with a name like Old Speckled Hen, it's got to be good. It's a British beer. Doing a British beer because I'm doing a British band. The mighty Led Zeppelin. Led Zepp. A giant among giants. Want a little bit of Zeppstery? It's not a real term. Until now. It begins now. Whoa. Huh. Saved a party foul. This group came out in what? 1968, imagine this time, or somewhere around there, late 60s, England in particular, first comes, starts with the Beatles and the Stones, start it all. I'm in the Stones camp, in case you're wondering. You can start your Twitter war in the comments below about the Beatles and the Stones, I'm going with the Stones. And then what follows is just giants up here, Led Zeppelin, the Who, Pink Floyd, uh, what else? Black Sabbath. There's more. I should have wrote them down. I should just have them memorized. But this, this time in the world, the beginnings of rock and roll, really, and every one of them just was incredible in their own right. They're all awesome bands. None of them sounded like each other. They all had their own identities. Deep Purple is another one. Deep Purple. Um, just phenomenal stuff coming out in the short period of time from coming from a cold island shaped place. Um, Led Zeppelin, maybe the mightiest of them all. A lot of people consider Led Zeppelin to be the best rock band ever. The best rock band ever. I don't know if there could be only one. I mean, because there's so many varials, but if this were the Highlander and there can be only one, then they would be the one. Jimmy Page put Led Zeppelin together. Hand-picked, curated group from his experience. He was a, a studio guitar player. Just, he's been doing it forever, like since he was 12 years old or something. And when it came time to do his band, he knew what he wanted. And he found that in Robert Plant, the rock god lead singer with the blonde hair and the stage moves like this. He does this or this, something like that. John Paul Jones, multi-instrumentalist, bass player, keyboardist. Wealth of musical knowledge there. And they got John Bonham, John Henry Bonham, Bonzo. Bonzo, I think, was playing in a band with Robert Plant. And just a natural force of nature this guy was. He's every drummer's favorite drummer. And he's what I consider to be one of the three Jesuses of drumming. There's Buddy Rich, he's a drumming Jesus, John Bonham, and Neil Peart. And what's crazy is, say, with John Bonham, he grew up listening to what, big band jazz, and somehow trans, and then, then the blues, and somehow translated what he heard into what he became. So there wasn't a lot of rock influences for him. He paved the way and is still the greatest now, you know, many, many years after his death, by the way, he, he died. He died when he was 32. He joined Led Zeppelin when he was 20. What were you doing when you were 20? Oh, you weren't playing drums in Led Zeppelin? Well, you're probably doing something, you know, as cool. We can't all be the drummer of Led Zeppelin. Um, yeah, so 20 years old, joins Led Zeppelin. They're tour the world. They're phenomenal. Everybody loves them. They're awesome. John Bonham died when he was, when he was 32. He died. Um, they were getting ready to tour. What was it, 1980? And John Bonham was having a, he a rough, rough patch in his life. You know, we all have our moments of doubt and pain. Even the great John Bonham. 
he was even doubting his drumming abilities. He was like, I'm no, no good and all this other stuff. So we, we all have that. Well, I don't. Yes, I do. Constantly. Um, so, you know, he decided to go on a drinking binge for like 12 hours, about noon to midnight. Clocked in at noon, clocked out at midnight. In that time, I, I think I read he had like 40 shots of vodka, which over that span of time, that's not too bad. But really, 30 should be enough for any situation, no matter how bad it is. 30 should do it. 40 was too much. And he got home safely. He was at, they were all staying together. They were all rehearsing. Um, he was put to bed on a couch. They even put him on his side and propped him up with a pillow because we know the dangers of this binge drinking. Somehow he rolled over to sleep. He had vomited, choked on his own vomit, perished. I remember it was 1980. I was like 11 or 12 years old. So I was in the world. I played the drums. I was a fan of rock and roll. I was a fan of Led Zeppelin. For my birthday that year, I actually got the, and through the outdoor brand new record, somebody was nice enough to give me for my birthday present. So I was very much, you know, just beginning to discover this great band Led Zeppelin. And then I heard John Bonham died. And, you know, I didn't even know what death was yet. I was only 12. I didn't grow up with a lot of pets or like goldfish or anything. So that's why you buy your kids like goldfish and gerbils. Things where, you know, just ease into this whole thing where we're born, we die. Some of us too soon, some of us not soon enough, huh? Uh, so enough of that. I know there's a bunch more British bands that came out at that time. You could also start a Twitter war about that. So what I'm gonna do is a song called The Ocean off of Houses of the Holy. Houses of the Holy is another Led Zeppelin album with a weird album cover. This one has naked children climbing up like rocks. They're like, yeah, that's that's uh that's gonna be the album cover. And the song is called The Ocean because Robert Plant, you know, was singing about this this ocean of heads at the concerts. That's where you see it. Singing to an ocean. That's one of the lines. And the rest of the song is pretty much gibberish, like talk to text gibberish. Um before they even had talk to text. And one more tidbit about the song and the intro. That's John Bonham counting it off. He says, we've done four already, but now we're steady. And then they went one, two, three, four. We've done four already re re uh, pertaining to, to what is it pertaining? Pertaining to the number of takes they did. So they tried the song four times. Fifth one was the keeper. Not bad at all. Especially, I know they don't just rehearse a ton and then go and record it. They're doing this stuff on the fly in the studio with, with Jimmy Page at the helm, producing, who is an awesome producer, guitar player, wizard. There's a bunch more stuff I could talk about Led Zeppelin and John Bonham. And I'll probably do two more Zeppelin tunes, making it, yes, another trilogy. But for tonight, we'll do The Ocean. So for tonight, we'll do the ocean. Watch. We've done four already, but now we're steady and then they win. One, two.
la 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 and subscribe. I mean, no, if you don't, remember to not to like and subscribe or smash any notification buttons. Um, Old Speckled Hen. With a name like Old Speckled Hen, it's got to be good. <laughs>